Senate will come to order. Secretary will call the roll. Alvarado, Betancourt, Birdwell, Blanco, Campbell, Creighton, Eckhart, Flores, Gutierrez, Hall, Hancock, Hinojosa, Huffman, Hughes, Johnson, King, Cocourse, La Montilla, Menendez, Middleton, Miles, Nichols, Parker, Paxton, Perry, Schwertner, Sparks, Springer, West, Whitmire, and Zaffarini. Quorum is present. Please rise for the invocation delivered by Senator King in the gallery and on the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Father, we just uh, come to you almost close to wrapping up a week. Uh, we thank you for the good work we've gotten done this week. We thank you that we've all got to participate. Uh, we uh, just ask that you would uh, give us a good rest over this weekend with our families, help us to get refreshed uh, in our walk with you, uh, refreshed in time with our family and just caught up on things and come back ready to do your work. Uh, help us to finish out uh, this week strong and getting things accomplished for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Senator. Members, we just have a number of third bill readings, and we'll go through those as quickly as we're able to. The Dean of the Senate moves to excuse Senator Birdwell and Sparks on account of important business. Any objection? Chair hears none. Motion is adopted. The Dean of the Senate moves to dispense with the reading of yesterday's journal. Objection? Chair hears none. Motion is adopted. Members, if there are no objections, I'd like to postpone the reading and referral bills until the end of today's session. Any objection? Chair hears none. Reading and referral bills is postponed. That concludes the morning call. Senator Colcourse, for what purpose? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. I move to suspend the 24-hour posting rule in accordance with Senate Rules 11.10 and 11.18 so that the Senate Committee on Health and Human Services can meet today, Thursday, April 20th, in the Senate press room, 2E.9, immediately upon adjournment or recess to consider pending business. Mr. President, members, if there are no questions, I move suspension. Any objection? Hearing none. Motions are adopted. Senator Menendez, you recognize third reading committee sub Super Senate Bill 627 to spend the regular order of business. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Members, uh, Senate Bill 627 is relating to the entitlement of a certain municipality on a certain tax revenue related for a hotel and convention center project. Uh, we just passed it a little yesterday, and so now I'll move uh, suspension of the regular business, take it up and consider. Secretary will call the roll when ready. Alvarado, Bettencourt, 22 ayes, 7 nays. The rules are suspended. Chair now lays out in third reading and final passage. Committee substitute for Senate Bill 627. Secretary will call, will read the caption. Committee substitute Senate Bill 627 relating to the entitlement of certain municipalities to certain tax revenue related to a hotel and convention center project. You recognize them final. President, I move final passage. Committee Secretary will call the roll. Sorry. Not a problem. I just wanted to pass the bill quickly for you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Alvarado, Bettencourt, Board Bell. 22 ayes, 7 nays. The bill is finally passed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, members. Senator Spring Springer, Committee Substitute for Senate Bill 924. Recognize spend the regular order of business. Thank you, Mr. President, I suspend the regular order of business on committee substitute to Senate Bill 924. Uh, members, this is that little bill we heard yesterday that uh, allows for precinct consolidation uh, when there is no other place to be able to vote to help uh, people vote uh, legally by uh, since they're voting in their actual precinct. Um, it is bracketed to counties under 1.2 million. And with that, I uh, move passage. Secretary, call the roll. 
Alvarado, Bentonville, Burbank. 17 ayes, 12 nays. Rules are suspended. Chair lays out third reading and final passage. Committee substitute for Senate Bill 924. Secretary, read the caption. Committee substitute Senate Bill 924 relating to the com combination of certain election precincts. You recognize the final. Thank you, Mr. President. I move final passage on committee substitute to Senate Bill 924. Secretary, we call the roll. Alvarado, Betancourt, Blanco, Blanco. 17 ayes, 12 nays. The bill is finally passed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Creighton, you recognize the Senate Bill 986, spend the regular order of business. You recognize spend the regular order of business. Move to spend. Secretary will call the roll when ready. Alvarado, Bentoncourt, Birdwell, Blanco, Campbell, Creighton. The rules are suspended. Rules are suspended. Charlie's out on third reading, final pass. Senate Bill 986. Secretary, read the caption. Senate Bill 986 relating to the authority of a local government to regulate evictions. Senator Zaffarini, what purpose? To speak against passage of Senate Bill 18. You're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Hold on, hold on one second. <laughs> We're on Senate Bill 986. We'll come back to All you right, on the you. other bill. Thank you. You're recognized on final passage, Senator Creighton. Thank you, Mr. President. Move final passage. Secretary will call the roll. Alvarado, Bentoncourt, Bernal, Bronco. Senate Bill 986, 18 to 11. The bill finally passes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Middleton, committee substitute for Senate Bill 1396, spend the regular order of business. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, I move to suspend the Senate's regular order of business to take up and consider committee substitute for Senate Bill 1396. Secretary will call the roll when ready. Alvarado, Betancourt, Birdwell, Blanco, Campbell. 17 ayes, 12 nays, rules suspended. Chair lays out in third reading and final passage. Committee substitute for Senate Bill 1396. Secretary, read the caption. Committee substitute Senate Bill 1396 relating to a period of prayer and reading of the Bible or other religious texts in public schools. You recognize the final passage. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, I move final passage on the committee substitute for Senate Bill 1396. Secretary will read the caption. I mean, call the roll. Alvarado, Bancourt, Birdwell, Blanco. 17 ayes, 12 nays. Bill's finally passed. Thank you. Senator Hall, you recognize Senate Bill 990. Spend the regular order of business. So move, Mr. President. Secretary will call the roll when ready. Take your time. I know we're moving quickly.
Alvarado, Bencourt, Birdwell, Blanco, Campbell, Creighton. 17 ayes and 12 nays. The rules suspended. Shirley's on third reading and final passage. Senate Bill 990. Secretary, read the caption. Senate Bill 990 relating to elimination of the countywide polling place program. Senator Whitmire, did you wish to speak on third reading on this bill? You spoke before. I didn't know if you just, just briefly. Just You're recognized. Just, thank you. Uh, I want to make sure my record is very clear because I have served when we did not have countywide voting, and now we do. And I understand there's some issues in Harris County. I haven't ever heard that this was one. I do know some of my friends would say that, well, this only applies to election day, and folks have two weeks prior to that to do it countywide. But I don't believe this fix the harm that I see because of the hardship and impossibility sometime of traveling across Harris County or other counties when you can't plan your agenda like some folks are as organized. Uh, if you live in Katy, Texas and work in the Med Center, there's no way in, it's going to be possible to a last minute need to get back home in your precinct to vote. So I want to be very clear on the record because I think it's going to be very unpopular. I'm afraid this has turned into a partisan issue, which it shouldn't be. I hate to be a political consultant for the Democrats or the Republicans here on the Senate floor, but I'm just telling you, in a urban setting, so many of the suburban voters are Republican to get back to Clear Lake, Kingwood, Baytown. I think we're creating an impossibility that will not suppress votes as much as perhaps interfere with votes. And so I'm only speaking to make sure my record's real clear. And I would suggest people that represent areas like Pearland with this explosion of population and traffic that work in the med center, you're really going to hear from those folks. It's my opinion, you're creating a really political issue for folks that have become accustomed to voting either at the courthouse downtown or a county courthouse annex, and now we're going to prohibit that practice. So uh, I'm just speaking to make my record very clear, and I would suggest to members that you ought to think about your district and how convenient countywide, and I understand, Senator Hall, you've made it real clear, it's not about convenience, it's about security, but I don't know where the vote is cast really has that much to do with the ability to audit that vote, so show me voting no. Senator Eckhart, what purpose? To speak briefly on the bill. You're recognized. I know. I just want to appeal to all of my colleagues. I know that you know the convenience of countywide polling locations. I know that you must be aware that if this bill actually becomes law, that that means that a a system requiring precinct level polling locations on election day means that you will not have you won't have polling locations that are uniformly available to disabled folk. You know that one polling location may flood and then you're stuck without a polling location in that precinct. You know that you're going to have individuals who leave their neighborhood early in the morning to go to work and will not be able to get back to their neighborhood polling location to vote during the time period that it's open. You know that this is not a good bill. And so I would just hope that y'all would consider Precinct-based voting would require the number of election day sites to nearly double in some counties at a significant cost. It would create significant challenges for disabled folk and also it would likely eliminate certain polling locations because of things that we cannot predict. That with a, a county-wide voting location gives our uh, voters an alternative if for any reason their local polling location becomes is inconvenient or is no longer available to them. 
And that's all I have to say. This is, this is it, when your voters are calling saying what happened to the convenience that you very carefully piloted and rolled out in a measured way over a number of years, why did you get rid of it? I wonder what your answer will be. Chick, uh, Senator Hall, you recognize final passage. So moved, Mr. President. Secretary, recall the roll. Alvarado, Betancourt, Nova, Blanco. 17 ayes, 12 nays. The bill is finally passed. Senator King, you're recognized to spend the regular order of business, Senate Bill 1515. Move suspension on Senate Bill 1515. Secretary, we'll call the roll. Alvarado, Ben, 1712. The rules are suspended. Chair lays out on second reading. I'm sorry. Third reading, final passage, Senate Bill 1515. Secretary, read the caption. Senate Bill 1515, relating to the display of the Ten Commandments in public schools. You're recognized on final. Move final passage. Secretary, we'll call the roll when ready. Alvarado, Betancourt, Birdwell, Blanco, Campbell. 17 ayes, 12 days. The bill is finally passed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, members. Senator Bentoncourt, you recognize spend the regular order of business committee substitute for Senate Bill 2071. Thank you, Mr. President. Move suspension of the regular order of business for the committee subsidy to Senate Bill 2071. Secretary, we call the roll. Alvarado, Bentoncourt, Bertrand, Blanco. 19 ayes, 10 nays. The rules spend it. Chair lays out on third reading and final passage. Committee substitute for Senate Bill 2071. Committee substitute Senate Bill 2071 relating to automatic recounts of certain elections. You recognize on final. Thank you, Mr. President. I move final passage of the committee substitute to Senate Bill 2071. Secretary, we'll call the roll. Alvarado, Ben. 19 ayes, 10 nays. Bill is finally passed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President and members. Senator Paxton, you recognize spend the regular order of business on committee substitute for Senate Bill 2381. Thank you, Mr. President. I move to suspend the regular order of business for the committee substitute to Senate Bill 2381. Secretary, we'll call the roll. Alvarado, Bettenberg, Berger, Blanco. 20 ayes, 9 nays. The rules are suspended. Chair lays out on third reading and final pass. Committee substitute for Senate Bill 2381. Secretary, read the caption. 
Committee substitutes Senate Bill 2381 relating to the development of a web page and mobile application for the provision of pregnancy related resources and information. You're recognized and final. Thank you, Mr. President. I move final passage. Secretary will call the roll. Alvarado, Betancourt, Birdwell. 20 eyes, nine days, bills finally passed. Thank you, Thank Senator. you, Mr. President. Thank you, members. Senator Betancourt, you're recognized by the regular order of business committee substitute for Senate Bill 2433. Thank you, Mr. President. I move suspension of the regular order of business committee substitute of Senate Bill 2433. Secretary, will call the roll. Alvarado, Betancourt, 17 ayes, 12 nays. Rules suspended. Chair lays out second reading. Committee substitute for Senate Bill 2433 on third reading and final passage. Secretary, read the caption. Committee substitute Senate Bill 2433 relating to certain election practices and procedures. You're recognized and final. Thank you, Mr. President. I move final passage of the committee substituted of Senate Bill 2433. Secretary will call the roll. Alvarado, Ben. 17 ayes, 12 days, close finally passed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President and members. Senator Creighton. You're recognized, spend the regular order of business on Senate Bill 18. This is our last bill of the day, members. You're recognized, Senator Creighton. You're recognized, spend the regular order of business. Thank you, Mr. President. Move suspension. Senator Alvarado, what purpose? Did you want to speak on third reading or? Yes. Okay. Secretary will call the roll. Alvarado, Betancourt, Birdwell. 18 ayes, 11 nays. The rules are suspended. Chair lays out in third reading and final passage. Senate Bill 18. Secretary will read the caption. Senate Bill 18, relating to tenure and employment status at public institutions of higher education in this state. Senator Zaffrini, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President and members, I rise to oppose Senate Bill 18. As a champion for education and academic freedom, I believe this bill is a grave threat to the stability and success of our institutions of higher learning. Tenure has been a fundamental part of higher education for more than a century, and for good reasons. It allows faculty members to focus on teaching, research, and service to their institution and community without fear of retaliation or arbitrary dismissal. What's more, tenure is an essential component of academic freedom which is essential for advancing knowledge, scholarship, and innovation. If this bill is passed, it could result in a significant reduction of job security for our faculty members. Without the protection of tenure or any form of permanent employment status, we risk losing some of our most talented and experienced scholars to other institutions that offer greater stability and job security. This would impact negatively the quality of education our students receive and harm the reputation of our institutions. As faculty left the state, so would research dollars, causing an impact on the economic development of our state and ultimately leading to loss of competitiveness in the global economy. We cannot afford to take such a short-sighted approach to higher education and to the economic future of our state. Equally important, this bill also would have an adverse impact on academic freedom, which is essential for advancing knowledge and promoting intellectual diversity. Without the protection of tenure, faculty members could be less willing to engage in controversial topics or express unpopular opinions simply for fear of retaliation or dismissal. It is true that many higher education institutions have failed to recruit enough women and minorities to the highest administrative and tenure track positions. It also is true that they must do more to recruit and to retain scholars who are women and minorities. But let us not lose sight of our goals to do better for them. And let us not hurt our great state by hurting higher education in this way. I have no doubt that eliminating tenure would tarnish our national reputation as a state 
and the academic rankings and aspirations of our universities. We must protect the stability and success of our institutions of higher education by ensuring our faculty members have the job security and the academic freedom they need to excel in their roles and to contribute to our state intellectually, culturally, and economically. And for these reasons and more, I will respectfully vote no, no on Senate Bill 18. Thank you, Mr. President and Senator Creighton. And Senator Creighton, thank you for your hard work and your great leadership on many, many issues and for your many courtesies in dealing with so many of us, especially with those who disagree. We may disagree, but we're friends. Thank you. Senator Zaffarini, you are always respectful. Thank you. Senator Alvarado. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Senator Creighton, I appreciate the many conversations we've had leading up to your bill layout today. I was hoping we would have had more time. I really wanted to work with you to make this a better bill so it could be a bipartisan bill, um, but we, that didn't happen. For example, I would have loved to have had the opportunity to continue the conversations and lay an amendment out that would have covered uh, people that were on track in the tenure process. I'm concerned about some of those that are in the process of making tenure and now this bill will go into effect and they will possibly leave, leave the institution, leave the state. I'm concerned about the issues that Senator West brought up about contracts are already in place. What happens? Do they have to get bought out? What are the terms of those contracts? The tenure track uh, process can take six to seven years, there are hundreds of faculty across our state doing great work who were recruited to our universities with the promise of tenure who would be affected. We should honor that promise. We also discussed the possibility of, of carving out some of the graduate programs um, and also uh, medical school, law school. That would have made this bill I think a little bit better. Maybe we could have had a more bipartisan show on this bill. But as we move forward and it goes across to the other chamber, um, hopefully they're able to, uh, to make some of these changes and it comes back and, and we'll see what happens after that. But the bottom line is I wanted you to know that we, uh, on our side of the aisle, we're really trying to um, bring some things to the table that could have complemented the bill uh, and maybe have something in place so that we're not just getting rid of tenure, but we have something else in its place. And maybe the bill could have had some, some guardrails, some guidelines in it that would make everybody comfortable. So I appreciate you taking the time. You have always been very uh, sincere and direct with us, and I knew you were shooting straight. Um, but we will continue along the lines of uh, communication. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Senator Eckhart, what purpose? Speak on the bill, sir. You recognize? Senator Creighton, I, um, you, you are always agreeable, even in disagreement. And I deeply appreciate that. Um, I rise to speak against this bill. Uh, a student asked my advice the other day after we had spent considerable time in this chamber debating the critical race theory bill. Uh, she was contemplating going to law school and she asked me for advice and I gave her the same advice that my parents gave me over and over again to the point where it's embedded in my DNA my parents told me that believing what you believe without examination makes you dull and susceptible to exploitation. They told me that we improve ourselves and we improve our world when we actively search out information that makes us uncomfortable and challenges our worldview that our existing beliefs will either be strengthened by that challenge or they will be altered by it. But either way, we are better for it. That is what tenure is for. Tenure is to actively seek out information that challenges our beliefs without being subordinated to the orthodoxy of current community beliefs, political beliefs, or even your fellow academic colleagues' beliefs. 
And as I read your bill, I was struck by your willingness to state that there should be an alternative for tenure. A tiered system of excellence that would highlight for the rest of the academic world who inside our academic uh, institutions had achieved the pinnacle of research acumen and the esteem of their colleagues. And I deeply appreciate that. But it still doesn't provide this thing we have come to know over decades, generations even, this thing we've come to know as tenure, which protects the scholar to test even their own beliefs. If it were just this bill alone, I might be less concerned. If it were just this bill alone, I might think that we can come up with an alternative system, call it something other than tenure, and still have a, um, a standard of excellence, a uh, designation of excellence that would then translate into some level of contractual protection uh, for that kind of robust research. But taking this bill in combination with the critical race theory bill, in combination with the DEI bill, I have unfortunately become concerned that we're ushering in an era of intellectual isolationism in Texas that will erode the standing of our universities in the nation and in the world. I don't believe that's what you seek, but I'm afraid that's what we are going to get from this combination of actions that this chamber has taken this legislative session. And so I will be voting no on this bill. Thank you, Senator. Senator Bonko. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, members, I rise to speak for Senate Bill 18. Members, you know, I've honestly been conflicted on this bill and its aims to ban tenure. And I know that this bill has been messaged as a solution to addressing attrition of new ideas, holding tenure faculty accountable. But I can't help but view tenure from a different lens. And that is looking at tenure as the historical and discriminatory barrier that it's been for minorities in higher education. Universities across the nation and across Texas have a long history of racism and of discriminatory practices. Higher education institutions to this day still fail on diversity, equity, and inclusion, especially, especially as it relates to tenure. Members, to prepare for this bill, my office has compiled statistics and data from universities across Texas about tenure, that tenure has been granted in the last five years. And the numbers do not lie, members. At UTRGV, 42% of faculty is Hispanic, but of all the faculty granted tenure, only 27% were Hispanic and 4% were black. At UTEP, my institution, one of them, 40% of the faculty is Hispanic, but of all the faculty granted tenure, only 18% were Hispanic, and 3% were black. This may sound high, but these institutions are on the border. 
where the Hispanic population is 80 to 90 percent. In fact, in recent years, UTEP has actually promoted Latino faculty to tenure at a lower rate. And at other schools around the state, those numbers drop drastically. At UNT, only 6% of the faculty granted tenure were Hispanic and 3% were black. At UT Dallas, only 5% of the faculty granted tenure were Hispanic and 8% were black. At University of Houston, only 8% of faculty granted tenure were Hispanic and 2% were black. At UT Arlington, only 5% of faculty granted tenure were Hispanic and 8% were black. At Texas State, 14% of faculty granted tenure were Hispanic, 4% were black, but 72% were white. And the numbers are the same or worse for women across the board. Yet white professors consistently make up 40 to 70% of all tenure promotions. There are disparate impacts on minority staff in areas of faculty representation, in compensation inequities, gender gaps, promotions, endowments, awards, university leadership positions, and tenure. Of UT Austin's more than 1,700 tenure and tenure track faculty, only 7% were Latinos and 8% were black, yet a striking 80% of tenure were white. Latinos lagged in promotions of tenure by 22% compared to their white professors, while black professors lagged by 9%. And in the reports that they provided us, it included recommendations that, UT, that the UT provost develop a three-year equity plan to reduce or eliminate inequities that affect Hispanic faculties. Despite the recommendations and evidence, UT Austin confirmed with my office just this week, that they did not follow through with the recommendations. Universities declined to put forward a plan to address minority disparities, including those in tenure. And a few months ago, universities across the state ditched diversity practices without putting up a fight for minorities. Senator Miles has been talking about this for weeks and Senator West. And the universities, after they ditched these practices, didn't provide any reassurances that minorities won't be left behind. They did not fight for diversity. And other university systems declined or did not even send us the data that we requested in time for this debate. Now, absent diversity, equity, and inclusion practices, I do not trust that higher education institutions in this state will do any better for minorities to provide an equal opportunity to all moving forward. And all you have to do, members, is look at their shameful record. Chairman Creighton, I want to thank you for your openness on working with me in my office, hearing my perspective, my concerns, and I look forward to working with you together to ensure that we get to the heart of these disparities that continue to exist in higher education, and I look forward to working with you to knock down some of these barriers. In good conscience, I cannot, I will not defend higher education. 
I cannot and I will not defend the status quo. The status quo to maintain the historically discriminatory barrier that tenure is within higher education for minorities. So I will be voting yes on Senate Bill 18 today. Thank you, members. Thanks, Senator Blanco. Senator Creighton, you're recognized on final passage. Mr. President, I move final passage of Senate Bill 18. Secretary will call the roll. Alvarado, Betancourt, Birdwell, Blanco. 18 ayes, 11 nays. The bill is finally passed. We are almost done. Members, if we can keep your attention just for a few more moments. Chair lays out the following resolution. The secretary will read the resolution. Senate Resolution 445 by Middleton, commemorating San Jacinto Day in honor of the decisive battlefield victory that brought about the independence of the Republic of Texas. Senator Middleton, on your resolution. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, since we're not going to be in tomorrow, I want to go ahead and recognize San Jacinto Day today. Tomorrow is a special day for the state of Texas and a reminder of our Texas exceptionalism. On April the 21st, 1836, 187 years ago, General Sam Houston and 900 Texians charged into the battle against Santa Ana and the Mexican army, shouting, remember the Alamo. And right here in this chamber, we have a reminder of that that depicts the battle and it is titled, Retributive Justice. I don't think we're confused what the artists thought of the Battle of San Jacinto with a name like that. We have to remember what the Texian army faced that day. On March 6, about a month before, everyone died at the Alamo. Shortly, shortly thereafter, on March the 27th, the Goliad Massacre, Colonel Fannin and all of his men died. And yet, despite everyone dying, we persisted, and the Texian army charged into battle for our God-granted freedoms, because that's what we do as Texans. Only 18 minutes into the battle at San Jacinto, the Texian army found themselves victorious. And it is because of the bravery, tenacity, and true Texas grit of these men and their dedication to securing liberty that we now live in the great state of Texas. I'm proud to have this historic battle site located in my district and a small portion in Senator Alvarado's district as well. And may we never forget the events of that day as they led to the inception of the Republic of Texas and the prosperous state that we enjoy today and that tomorrow be a reminder for all of us that freedom is never free. Thank you, Mr. President, members. It is my honor to recognize San Jacinto Day tomorrow and with that I move adoption and to add all members' names to the resolution. Members, I think we should all rise for honoring tomorrow San Jacinto Day. The resolution is adopted. And Senator Milton moves to add all members' names to the resolution. Any objection? Members, the following motion in writing. Motion in writing, Mr. President, I move suspension of Senate Rule 7.07b to permit the introduction of the following bill, SCR 45 by Nichols. Any objection? Hearing none. Motion is adopted. Following bills and resolutions on first reading in reference to committee, the secretary will read the bills and resolutions. Madam Secretary, can we hold one moment? Because I know the members are going to start leaving the floor. Members, I just want to uh, share a message with you. And I'm sorry that Senator Gutierrez has left early. Earlier in the day, when he suggested that Senator Hall, the chair of administration, lost his blue card, that blue card has been here. It was not lost. It was not filled out properly because it didn't have a second signature. And the reason that it didn't have a second signature, the chair tells me because there was indiscriminatory knocking off of multiple bills. 
the purpose of the blue card and local and consent is that members trust each other for their local bills. And that's why you pass them out on a bipartisan basis. Occasionally a member may have an objection and they can knock any bill off with a blue card. It is not meant wanton knocking off bills. And so members, I'm sorry that Senator Gutierrez believed he was unjustly punished in some matter by the chair, but the chair did not lose the blue card. It's been here, and he was told it didn't have a second signature. It's my responsibility as the president of the Senate to keep decorum on the floor. This is my ninth session, working on 18 years. We've never allowed one senator to make a personal attack on another senator's character and integrity, and I don't intend that to happen again. So I hope you'll respect my decision on that, and uh, we'll visit with Senator Gutierrez and make sure he understands the procedure. But I want to stand up for the chair and vice chair of that committee. That card was not lost. It was not signed by a second signature. So those bills passed off the floor today, by the way. Thank you. Now you may read, Madam Chair, the bills. SCR 45 by Nichols designating Palestine as the official Dogwood Trails capital of Texas to administration. HJR 3 to finance. HJR 126 to water, agriculture, and rural affairs. HB 92 to local government. HB 252 to criminal justice. HB 1106 to health and human services. HB 1286 to business and commerce. HB 1381 to local government. House Bill 1429 to criminal justice. House Bill 1500 to business and commerce. House Bill 1565 to water, agriculture, and rural affairs. House Bill 1595 to finance. House Bill 1646 to water, agriculture, and rural affairs. House Bill 1704 to local government. House Bill 1750 to water, agriculture, and rural affairs. House Bill 1773 to veteran affairs. House Bill 1922 to local government. House Bill 1925 to local government. House Bill 2016 to business and commerce. House Bill 2127 to business and commerce. House Bill 2183 to criminal justice. House Bill 2243 to Health and Human Services. House Bill 2308 to Water, Agriculture, and Rural Affairs. House Bill 2556 to Health and Human Services. House Bill 2802 to Health and Human Services. House Bill 3059 to Water, Agriculture, and Rural Affairs. House Bill 3115 to State Affairs. House Bill 3211 to the Subcommittee on Higher Education. Members of the President's session clear. Any announcements? Senator Hughes? Thank you, Mr. President. The Senate Committee on State Affairs will resume its posted meeting here in the chamber upon adjournment. While the tables are being set up, we'll be gathering at my desk in the chamber to vote. So we will resume upon adjournment at my desk and vote and continue our agenda. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Colcourse, did you have an announcement? Would you like to remind everyone? I Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we will be having a formal meeting where we will be voting in the Senate press room upon recess or adjournment today. Adjournment. Senator Betancourt. Thank you, Mr. President. Not an official announcement, but tomorrow is Aggie muster. And so you will find Senator Flores and the Aggies in the crowd uh, having a, 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 a time to visit with old friends and remembrances and Aggie muster on the April 21st as our commemoration of the Battle of San Jacinto. Senator Campbell. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, Senate Committee on Nominations will meet Monday, April 24th, bright and early, 8 a.m., E1016. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator. The chair recognized the Dean of the Senate in waiting for a highly privileged motion. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President and members, I move that the Senate adjourn until 11 a.m. Monday, April 24th. Thank you. Any objection, Chair, is none. The Senate stands adjourned until Monday, 11 a.m., April 24th. Thank you, members. Have a good weekend. You worked hard.